Just over a year ago, NASA launched the James Webb Space Telescope, the most incredible space telescope ever built. And in just the last few months, NASA has already revealed so many new incredible images, allowing the scientists to discover a lot of new mysteries, but also obviously answering a few questions in the process. And so in this video, I wanted to focus on some of the biggest highlights coming from the telescope in the last few months that to some extent changed our perspective or our understanding of the universe, at least to some extent. While also highlighting the importance of this mission overall. It took about 20 years to create everything, and it also took approximately $10 billion. And because of the successes during the launch, and because of the efficiency of the launch, turns out that this mission might last for 20 years instead of 10. And so let's discuss some of these discoveries, and what they actually mean for science and for us as humanity. And some of the first mind-blowing discoveries came from this image of a distant cluster known as SMAX J0723 that was also the first ever deep field image taken by the James Webb a few months ago. In this case, it basically stared at the same spot for many, many hours, uncovering a lot of hidden objects in the process. And pretty much right away, the scientists started to discover incredibly distant objects in just a few days after the image was released. Now, before the James Webb, this was the most distant confirmed galaxy. We've discussed this many times before, you can check out some of the previous videos in the description. But now the scientists were discovering galaxies way, way farther away, with the recently confirmed galaxy being at a redshift of 13.2, and some galaxies even being possibly farther away. There's even been a suggestion of a redshift of 20, which would imply existence of galaxies approximately 200 million years after the formation of the universe. And to some extent, this brings us to the other discovery, the abundance of well-developed galaxies really early in the universe. Galaxies that were already producing a lot of radiation already possess shapes resembling the Milky Way galaxy, occurring at frequencies about 10 times more than the scientists expected. And essentially what this implies is that we don't entirely understand how galaxies evolved and formed really early in the universe. By the way, this does not mean that the Big Bang theory is incorrect, quite the opposite. It just means that the properties of the early universe are not entirely understood or that the galaxies were evolving in a very different way back in the days compared to how they evolve now, very likely because of different composition and very different overall properties of the universe itself. Although, at the moment, nobody really knows. There does seem to be a more diverse and higher number of developed galaxies compared to what scientists predicted, but they're still much less developed than anything in the modern universe. Nevertheless, the same image was actually able to reveal so much more even some of the most distant global clusters we've ever seen. In this case, this is what the scientists now refer to as a sparkler, and it's very likely some of the oldest clusters we've ever detected, or potentially some other unexplained object similar to a cluster. They definitely represent some kind of a globular object that seems to be extremely far away, not so different from an object that you see right here. There are actually several dozen of these in the Milky Way, with a lot of these possibly being ancient cores of dwarf galaxies, but the origin of some of these clusters is still not understood even today. Which means that this particular image and this discovery might actually lead to the explanation for their existence. It was also able to take pictures of the recently discovered most distant star ever, Arendelle as it's known, although in this case it did not originally discover the star, but was able to see it in different light. The star is at a redshift of 6.2 and is about 28 billion light years away from us, and was actually originally discovered by Hubble not so long ago. But it's probably only a matter of time before it actually discovers its own record holder, beating Hubble. And that's the other important achievement of the telescope. It was able to collaborate with Hubble for many different observations. For example, observing different galaxies in different wavelengths, and then comparing the results in order to see what actually is going on inside of them. For example, they both observed NGC 1566, revealing different details in the process. And the point here is to actually learn how galaxies evolve and how they change over time. It even collaborated with other telescopes, observing the collision with the asteroid Dimorphos, part of the DART mission we've discussed previously. And this allowed the scientists to study a lot of different galaxies and a lot of different events, such as this asteroid collision, in multiple wavelengths, uncovering detail that would be otherwise invisible. But for galactic evolution, this is especially important, because here the scientists are trying to figure out how various chemical abundance in various galaxies results in very different galaxies. And that's because prior to the James Webb, there was actually a limit to how far the scientists were able to see into the universe in order to discover various elements. The Hubble telescope was able to detect those galaxies and was able to provide the visual observation, 
but it could not tell us about the chemical composition of the galaxies involved. Before the limit was about the redshift of 3.3, but now the scientists can see as far as the redshift of 8. And a lot of these preliminary discoveries and observations have actually already showed that the relationship between star formation and mass, or basically how galaxies evolve over time, seems to be different for galaxies that are really far away. Potentially because the abundance of heavier elements turned out to be a lot lower, about three times as low as expected. Which could also maybe explain how the galaxies form so quickly and how they were able to change the universe in the process as well. Focusing on the period known as the reionization period, when the universe became transparent after being somewhat opaque, or basically not allowing light to travel too far. And so a lot of these preliminary observations and analysis do suggest that these galaxies that form much quicker and were much more developed and more powerful might have been responsible for basically changing the universe in a process, reionizing hydrogen, and thus allowing us to see everything far away. But those were discoveries from far, far away from distant universe. There were also quite a lot of discoveries from right here, the Milky Way, or even the solar system. And I think it's the solar system that really captured our imagination. Jupiter was one of the first images released, and it already showed us so much more about Jupiter that we didn't actually know about. It showed us the aurora, the temperature variation across Jupiter, the tiny rings of Jupiter, and even the interaction with its moon Io. It then also took a look at the Saturn system, specifically focusing on the most exciting moon known as Titan, uncovering actual clouds that haven't been seen for decades. These were most likely methane clouds, but it once again confirmed that Titan definitely has a liquid cycle on the surface, in this case a cycle involving methane. It very likely turns into rain or snow, freezes, evaporates and repeats the cycle based on various seasons. And so this was already a pretty big discovery as well. And then it even surprised us with an image of Neptune and its moon Triton. In this case revealing detail of the rings and revealing some of the weather patterns that haven't really been seen before either. We've actually discussed all of these objects in some of the previous videos in the description, so if you want to learn more detail, check them out as well. But it also made some observations of Mars, showing very specific variations in temperature on the surface and trying to detect how all of this is influenced by carbon dioxide in the process discovering what we already knew about Mars, but this was mostly important in order to see how various exoplanets are going to look like once we look at them in the future, especially if they're for example terrestrial and have similar temperature effects to what we have on Mars. And in this case it already had some of the initial observations of various distant exoplanets. This was from a hot gas giant known as WASP-96b, where the water was previously detected by other telescopes and has now been officially confirmed by James Webb. Although in this case, very hot molecular water, not really the same water as we have on Earth. It also made its first direct observations of distant exoplanets, in this case revealing a very young planet that you see right here. But more importantly, it already started to observe the iconic TRAPPIST-1, the system of seven terrestrial planets with several in the habitable zone. Although at the moment, as you might have learned from the recent video, the preliminary discoveries so far suggest that, well, there might be either no atmosphere or an atmosphere that's extremely difficult to see. And so for a lot of scientists, it's really the exoplanetary studies that are actually so exciting when it comes to James Webb, because it's actually so good at detecting various signals of various extremely difficult to detect molecules. Which of course means that this is our best telescope and our best chance to discover some really exciting exoplanets with potentially similar conditions to what we have on planet Earth, or maybe even discover something else really unusual in the process. With a lot of other beautiful images taken by James Webb, mostly being images of various nebula or various very young stars, such as this beautiful image of L1527, an extremely young protostar that's essentially formed by the interacting molecular gas and the protoplanetary disk in the middle that creates these two-sided outbursts. At the same time, it already took a look at one of the most active star-forming regions near us, the Tarantula Nebula, once again focusing on the evolution of early stars and the evolution of elements in this nebula as well. Something similar was then done with the iconic Pillars of Creation, the formation that became really famous because of the Hubble, but in this case the images from James Webb revealed a lot of hidden objects, with a lot of these representing a lot of activity in the nebula mostly formed by young stars, once again more info in that video in the description. With a lot of similar studies focusing on the Carina Nebula, the Southern Ring Nebula, 
which was actually one of the first images released, and the iconic Orion Nebula that once again uncovered a lot of young stars that were hidden behind gas before. And so a lot of these nebula and a lot of these molecular clouds are very likely going to be the most common images that we're going to be seeing for many months to come. Mostly because James Webb is able to see through a lot of this gas, and mostly because this is actually one of the primary missions of the telescope. Figure out planetary formation and also figure out how stars like our Sun form as well. And the best way to do this is to look at these young stars far away. And so we've definitely come a really long way in just a few months, since the first selfie, first picture of the primary mirror, to all of these insanely beautiful images that were released just a few days ago. Which is great news for me because I've been really enjoying making videos about this, and so if you do enjoy them as well, make sure to subscribe because I'm going to be following this up with every major update. And so a pretty great year for James Webb, lots of incredible and very exciting discoveries, but also lots of new mysteries for the scientists to figure out and for me to talk about in the upcoming videos. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt that has James Webb Space Telescope on it in the description below. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye. Oh yeah, and Happy New Year, Happy Holidays, bye bye.